It was soon after I arrived in South Africa, and when I started going out to Safari Town with Bloke, almost at that time I, really, I was told that they were tearing Safari Town down. Because they were starting to tear it down before I even got there. And uh, at the beginning I wasn't, didn't know I was going to film in Safari Town. But I think pretty soon after, I realized that it would be a good place to, to film because of that, because that was going on at the, at the same time, and it fit into the story. And uh, it was a very moving thing because the Africans were very sad about it. They were very up. They were very really upset. It wasn't just a matter of moving and a minor thing. It was like they had roots there in Sofia Town, and Sofia Town had become. I didn't realize. Then I, it's, it's only recently that I've become aware of it that Sophia Town had become a, become a great cultural center, in a way. Like Harlem in the 30s, you had the Harlem Renaissance. In Sophia Town you had a kind of cultural upheaval and you had artists and singers and, you know, I mean, it was a, a shanty town, in a sense, not a shanty town, but it was uh, almost a slum. But you had, but in, that's the only place Africans lived. So you had all grades. You had, you had no class structure. It was mixed between journalists and uh, singers like Miriam, all together with uh, workers in the railroad. So you had this incredible mixture of people, and they all mixed together. And they were very, uh, it, was a, it was a great uh, nostalgia about it. Because I was so caught up with the film, I wasn't thinking about that too much. You know, but I, there's a film that's been made since called, uh, well, something about Sophia Town, and they, they, it's the whole film about Sophia Town. They go into that in detail. <laughs>